Uh, that one? Okay, perfect. Uh, so hi everyone, I'm Aaron uh, Ferber. I'm a PhD student working with Bisha Dilkina and some collaborators at uh, University of Alabama, University of Maryland and Babson. And uh, thank you to the organizers for organizing this. You've done a great job. Um, so the problem that we're tackling is uh, predicting wildlife trafficking paths um, in the global trade network. So wildlife trafficking is obviously a big problem, um, but to hammer this point home, it's the second biggest threat uh, to biodiversity. Um, specifically, 1 million pangolins are trafficked over 10 years. Uh, there are less than uh, 4,000 wild tigers left and uh, 20,000 African elephants are killed every year. Um, but even more to the point, uh, outside of just biodiversity, uh, wildlife trafficking impacts uh, the global economy. It costs the economy around five to $23 billion annually. Um, and it plays a role in spreading zoonotic disease, uh, interfaces with other criminal activity and harms sustainable development efforts. And so the problem that we're trying to tackle is this issue of the wildlife trafficking supply chain. And so overall, international borders are crossed majority uh, by air. So we want to be looking at the wildlife supply chain that's being trafficked uh, through the global flight network. So people taking planes to traffic, you know, pangolin scales or uh, tortoise shells using, uh, using airlines. And so overall, our goal here is to predict what are the likely trafficking routes that people are, uh, that traffickers are trying to take. Um, and not only that, the first question is what paths will the adversary take? Uh, but then the second question is what might explain the paths that the traffickers are taking? What kind of uh, features might they be using to uh, determine uh, what routes they want to choose? Um, and hopefully by doing that, we can inform policy about, you know, if you can interdict traffickers, you can also get a double benefit of trying to stop other, you know, illegal activity like human trafficking. So in terms of data, we collect a wide variety of data. Um, there's seizure data available. And if you want more information at the bottom here, there's this uh, recent paper on uh, a database of data. So just like listing out all the wildlife trafficking related data. Um, for example, this is one seizure that we're looking at. Um, and this is like the full data set that we're working on. And overall, the machine learning formulation is that we want to be able to predict these red lines in kind of this nest of all uh, flight paths. And the tricky part is how do we predict paths? It's not really an easy problem in machine learning. And so the thing that we propose to do that is um, we embed this shortest path solver. So we embed this decision-making module inside the deep learning pipeline to kind of train uh, by giving the neural network access to a path planner, a differentiable path planner. And we can go more into that later. Um, Overall, in terms of results, by using this differentiable path planner, we get kind of better results than a naive model, which doesn't have access to this path planner. Um, but in addition to that, what we get is some insights about uh, where we're making mistakes or differences to the ground truth paths. And so here we kind of plot out what the ground truth path was and what the path planner thought it would be. And we found that in a large majority of these cases, when we discussed with the stakeholders, that these were alternate routes that might not be present in the data, but are reasonable paths that traffickers might be taking. Uh, additionally, to figure out you know, what might be influencing these traffickers, we found that uh, these different components were really highly correlated with the wildlife trafficking. So specifically human trafficking, heroin trade, arms trafficking, presence of criminal networks, anti-money laundering systems, and the presence of other criminal actors were all kind of highly correlated with uh, paths that traffickers were taking throughout this network. And so the key takeaways here uh, that we found were that, you know, giving access to this differentiable path planner stuff can lead to better path prediction. Um, machine learning can also help identify likely trafficker routes. And finally, that data shows that uh, wildlife trafficking routes can often co-occur with other illicit activity or other things that decision makers might want to uh, prevent. Um, and so in terms of next steps, we're working with decision makers to help inform interdiction efforts to figure out where should you be placing police officers and checkpoints in order to catch the wildlife traffickers now that we have some idea of where they might be going. Um, and the other step is to identify a broader range of features that we might pull in to help identify uh, what paths traffickers might be taking. Thank you.